Good morning. Welcome home to Mailer's Landing. So it is the 20th of June. It is ridiculously warm outside already at like 10, 15 a.m. And I do not want to go out there. Um, the chickens are well accounted for. <laughs> Got out in the garden this morning while it was still cool enough to, to be out in the garden and pulled some peas in. I want to show you something. If your garden is anything like mine, stuff does not ripen at the same time at all. <laughs> um, and it's really easy to eat like three pea pods and then keep walking <laughs> and wait till the next morning when the pea pods are ready and grab some more pea pods. But this year I thought about it in advance a little bit. I planted snap peas on one trellis and then the shelling peas on the two other trellises. And so the snap peas are keeping me from eating the shelling <laughs> peas as soon as they're ready. There's a lot on these pea tendrils right now. Uh, the King Tut purple peas look amazing, but they're still all in that flat stage. So we're waiting for them to fill out before we bring them in and blanch them and freeze them. In the meanwhile, a whole bunch of the English shelling peas are ready, but it's only by the handful. You know, it's little pocket harvests now in June. So uh, what I've been doing is bringing them in by the handful, blanching them and popping them into a bag in the freezer. That is like two little pocket harvests. And when I talk about pocket harvests, I mean like the little pocket on the side of my pants. Um, but yeah, I bring them in, take them out of the shells, and then they go for a dip in boiling water for two minutes take them out, let them dry on a paper towel or, um, or a flour sack if you have that kind of a thing. Clean towel will do, ain't no big. Just let them dry a little bit before you pop them in here or you'll wind up with a bunch of frost. I wouldn't have learned that the hard way or anything. Uh, so anyway, yeah, this is the pea harvest. I'm hoping to have, you know, a nice, nice size baggy in the freezer by the end of the season, but we're just taking it slow and steady, right? It's been a dull handful of days around here. Um, the heat has really got my motivation totally in the dumpster. Uh, so I've been trying to get some stuff done around here, but it's been up and down. You know how it is. You know how it is, right? Also, I've been aching for cake and I want to make cake. Um, I don't know if you know this about me, but I don't love baking. I love to cook. Cooking is, it's a happy place for me. I get to chop stuff, I get to make a meze. It's lovely and it smells good. And then I can add and subtract as I go along. And that's great, because I love flying by the seat of my pants when I'm in the kitchen. Um, but baking, baking is trickier. Baking is more of a science and you've got to follow instructions like closely. Um, <laughs> which is probably why I've been struggling with bread all these years on and off. Um, but anyway, I do have something that I do like to make. Angel food cupcakes are one of my favorite and I like to make them stuffed. Uh, so found myself with a handful of fruit fillings left over from something I was gonna do in December and just didn't do. Anyway, I wound up with a whole bunch of cans of fruit fillings left over. This one is blueberry. I'm gonna make some angel food cupcakes and I'm going to stuff them with said leftover blueberry business. In my humble opinion, angel food cake is the best kind of cake because you get to make meringue. And there is something that is just so magical about watching those egg whites turn into a fluffy, ex 
expanse of marshmallowish goodness that just warms my heart. I'll leave the recipe down below in the description. It's kind of cobbled together from a few recipes, but it's generally worked for me. So I've got the whisk attachment on here. I'm just gonna pour in my eggs. Uh, this recipe called for a dozen egg whites, enough to make a cup and a half. As soon as they start to get a little bit foamy, we're gonna add in some cream of tartar, a little bit of salt, and some vanilla extract, and some almond extract. We are frothy. Okay, we will be mixing to soft peaks, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, let me show you what this looks like in here. Okay, this is where we're at right now. And you can see we're not really peaking, but we are sticking together pretty well. At this point, we're ready to add the sugar. The recipe calls for a cup and a half of sugar, but half a cup of that is going to go in with our flour and we'll fold that in at the end. Right now, we're gonna add the sugar in while we're on low speed, bump up the speed again, and then get it to soft peaks. Let's see if we're there yet. Oh, lovely. Hard peaks are really easy to tell when you've gotten there. They get glossy. They really hold their shape when they come up. We want soft peaks and that's what we got. Look at that. When you invert it, it dips over into itself. You can see how the top of that just is falling right back down. And that's where we want to be. Mm. The almond extract on that really, really makes it special. Highly recommend. I mean, of course, if you hate almond, no big deal. Just run straight up with vanilla. But um, the almond's pretty good, man. All right, so we're gonna get these into... Mm -hmm. All right, raw egg. I probably shouldn't be doing that. So we're gonna fold in our flour and the rest of our sugar now. I'm gonna... Do about a quarter of it at a time. We're all folded and now it is time to assemble our stuffed cupcakes. I wanted a luxurious cupcake, so I went with the big size, and these cupcake liners, turned out they were the small size, but if you just sort of mm -hmm, give them a wiggle, <laughs> they become the large size. So we're gonna fill these about a third of the way through um, with our angel food batter. And then I'm gonna add a couple teaspoons of this blueberry nonsense we've got that tastes delicious. You have never seen such disappointed cats as when I opened this up. They heard the can opener and they came running and I held out the lid for them and they were like, why do you do this to us? So we're gonna fill these about a third of the way through. We're gonna drop in a teaspoon or two of our blueberries, and then we're gonna fill them another third of the way through so they won't come quite to the top. We don't want them to, otherwise they'll spill over in the oven. Speaking of, I've got the oven set on 350. It's preheating as we speak. So let's get to stuffing.
So this is admittedly kind of messy. Perfect is the enemy of finished and we deserve cake. It's been 25 minutes. The timer just went off. Let's see what we got. Oh, look at that. These are my men. And I intend to feed them food. <laughs> Who wants cake? Let's get some cake. Uh-huh. Okay. Look at this darling little cupcake. Oh, you filled them. I did. I did, son of mine. Let's see. Oh, oh, oh hell yeah. look at that. That's really good. Look at that mm. beauty. All right, taste. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm. oh, these are good. The middle is so warm. Mm. Mm. I feel whole and complete. Eating. They're just like angel food is supposed to be. Yeah. That like marshmallowy. Oh my god, the middle is so warm. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> These came out super. Highly recommend. I will drop the recipe into the description below and let me know if you make them and how it goes for you. Just one quick note. I used canned blueberries because I had pie filling to hand. Um, but you can do these with fresh fruit and it's it's just as good. It's super. Um, so cheers. Thanks for hanging out with me in the kitchen today and we'll catch you up soon. Take care. Too short. Now step in. Lord have mercy. I am a short, short woman. There we go. You better duck.